come once again to discuss things. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Part 2. Joining me today is... A geek for fun. Indeed. Um, and we are we are at our final episode, normal episode of Geeky Gentlemen, before we start entering all our, our themed months for three months of themage, one month of just me telling you why America is bad. Um... And, and I decided, you know, I like to do transitional episodes when I can, and we, we actually do have a unique opportunity. So Alfie and I were talking about cosplays uh, before, before we got it on recording, and I thought that would be a fun topic to do before we get into Horror Month, because, you know, cosplay, costume, Halloween, costumes. Um, now, oddly enough, this is a topic that has been covered before on Kiki Gentlemen. It's like Geeky Gentleman Year One shit, though. Uh, we've changed. We've we've lost the Frank Miller vibes. We've gone. We've sold out to the SJWs. Um, there's there's just a lot of change that has gone on, and I thought it'd be fun, especially since Alfie is way more of a cosplayer than I ever was, and I thought it'd be fun to to shoot the shit with him and and talk cosplays, especially since I'm kind of getting back into it a little bit right now, working on a Zoro costume. That I've been working on for about three years. <laughs> <laughs> so you're already halfway there to the cosplay thing. Now all you need to do is never finish it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that's how it felt it was going to be. Um, it's funny because I guess I don't know how much of a universal experience this is. Or maybe I do it in a weird way. So, like... My Zoro costume started because I found that one piece that I know is gonna that that I know makes it all work. Um, it was when I was working at Goodwill, and I found the hat. And Zoro has like a very particular hat. It's not just like a black cowboy hat. It's not like something that that you see very often. It's this this very particular style of hat and I found exactly what I needed at at my work and so I bought it and I was like okay yeah I'll make a Zoro cosplay out of this and it's very slowly come together since then and I'm getting to the finishing touches on it I've got to finish up the cape which is mainly just trimming it a little bit and attaching a a hook to it uh, to, to be able to close it and I've got to make a shirt and then it'll be done <laughs> which will be kind of kind of legit because it'll be done just in time for for Halloween and and I I have a goal of being that house uh, eventually in my neighborhood I want to be the house uh, that that all the kids are really excited to go to and so if I have a really kick-ass Zoro costume to break out over here, I think that'll be <laughs> kind of an exciting thing. And, you know, it'd be nice to be able to wear it some other places and whatnot. But, you know, I... I oh, absolutely. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, is, is that something that you have with, with any of your cosplays where, like, you find the piece and then decide to make a whole outfit around it? Or is it more like you get a vision for what you want to do beforehand? Normally it is always, I, depending on something I'm very into at the moment, because I go through phases a lot with my interests, mm -hmm. like I'll get really into something for a couple of months and then phase out, which becomes impractical with cosplays because you normally need more of the time than that to make something. So when I start phasing out of the phase and I'm like still stuck with half of the equipment here, I'm just like, oh, well, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> so that, that's been downset. Um, but the one time that has happened um, is when I was going through my other cosplays, I was like, well, I want to make sure 
because someone I, I, at that point if anyone doesn't know my favorite superheroes are superman batman spider-man and daredevil and i I had done Spider-Man as my first cosplay, I've done loads of Spider-Man variations. I did a Daredevil, um, <laughs> I'm a lawyer, so I've even did a Matt Murdock. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a Superman, and I, the only one I didn't do was Batman, because I never felt like I could pull him off, because Batman's a very, like, even Superman, you can have, like, younger Superman, you can, like, when he's a Superboy and stuff, he looks skinnier. I'm not a very big dude, so Batman has to have that intimidation factor, and I always felt, oh, you know, it, 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 it's just not there at the moment um especially because i'm on the younger side i'm not like batman normally needs to have like a more grizzled features so all of that kind of put me off until when i was scrolling around i would follow this uh site called tiger stone effects and they posted a really amazing picture of a blue batman cow and it looked legit it looked very different than say like how the bat flag or like the movie cows are where they've got very like old frank miller features built into the cow this one looked very comic accurate and very like sleek so it could fit a younger face and it just made me instantly think oh this would look great on dick grayson kind of thing and that's eventually which led to my dick grayson batman cosplay um so yeah that is probably the closest example i've had to that lesser examples probably would include especially for drag dragon ball cosplays i think my major finger is always before i even think about doing it I'm like, how can I, how would I do the hair? Because mm-hmm. that makes or breaks a lot of those for me. Because I see these fantastic Dragon Ball cosplayers, but it's always dependent on that initial shot of no matter how good the costume is, if the hair doesn't look right, it just doesn't look like Dragon Ball. Yeah, and like, it's, it's interesting to see the different approaches that people do to kind of solve those like very particular stylistic things from different, uh, different franchises, you know? Like Dragon Ball, mm-hmm. you mentioned... Yeah, I've seen plenty of people do, like, wigs. I've seen other people do, like, you know, gel their hair to, to crazy degrees. Um, just to, you know, a, a number of, of various approaches to try to make it work. Some people don't, like, even really do much of anything, right? They're just like, okay, the, the hair is just, like, something that's it's not really there. It's or not really doable in in a very practical way. So I'm just gonna wear the outfit and, and leave my hair down or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. So it is. It's interesting to see those different stylistic approaches and this. You know, it's all just very like you know backyard work, and that is something I get just super nostalgic for because I did so much of it. Of, of just you know backyard tooling and and kind of creating stuff and it's it is super fun to see how that all kind of comes together yeah it's my favorite part of doing it i find it very um therapeutic and probably why i like cosplay so much as a hobby is the cons are great the meeting people are great seeing the reactions especially from kids it's just the it, it, it like it would just it, once you experience it once you just like get such a buzz from it you get such a feeling of just like wow i made a memory i i i managed to bring the life this character to someone and even when you not like initially going all out if you go for just a more casual cosplay it's just fun to wear that character and just in any kind of way and you kind of get that energy into like say you're wearing like a goku t-shirt you suddenly maybe feel a little bit more like you know what maybe i can do like an extra five push-ups or something like stuff like that i think is important but what i get the most out of it especially for the more intensive builds are the just the long quiet hours where i've got my headphones in i'm sitting down in my kitchen on the floor complete mess of foam and eva mat so like <laughs> every like hot glues or stains all over my clothes and everything but it's it's just like my ideal environment of just like okay i'm gonna sit down a few hours i'm gonna get to work start from just a template and then by the end of the day oh hey that's a gauntlet mm-hmm. and it just it feels so exhilarating when you get to that point yeah and you know the funny thing about me is most of the the material i tended i, I tend to work with because I guess I'm a cosplayer. I, I, I've taken a very long hiatus. Maybe this Zoro bullshit will get me way back into it in a, in a disturbing way. Um, but, like, I, the material I always worked with was almost entirely fabric. Which which is just ridiculous, because I can sew, but not for shit, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I do really messy stitches. I do, I, I do not do good 
quality work. Like, you would not pay me to be your tailor. Um, but I always tend to gravitate toward fabric, and I think it's just because I understand fabric more in, in a way that, like, foam never really clicks with me. I guess it, it's kind of the same thing of I, I have of why I could never be, like, a sculptor, because I, I don't physically, I do not understand how someone goes, like, block of marble to statue. You know, I just, I, I cannot possibly think that way. <laughs> Uh, and, and I guess I have like kind of a similar thing with foam. Like, I guess maybe if you like layer this stuff, but it, it, to me, fabric just, um, it just makes more logical sense to me. Even if I'm not like great at working with it, I understand how to get there on a thing. So like when I was working on the cape, um, luckily I already had the fabric lying around from, uh, something else I was trying to do, not related to cosplay at all, but just, I had some really heavy black fabric, which I, I think will be great for the cape. Um, so when I was working on the Zorro cape, I was like, all right, how do you do a collar exactly? And so I like looked up this tutorial that someone posted about like how to sew a collar, a high cape collar. And they were doing more for like, a, I guess what I'd call like a Dracula look where it's like, you know, full on popped collar kind of thing. Oh my God, Dracula's a dude bro who pops right. his collar. <gasps> <laughs> He's the original dude, bro. There you go. He's the frat boy. Like, that's why he keeps going around to women and finding virgins. Right? Fucking, I need a virgin. Um, that was a terrible Dracula. <laughs> uh, this chick's such a fucking slut. Um, I'm not doing a drink of slut's blood. Uh, anyway, anyway. Um, so, like, I was, I was working on, like, I, I found a tutorial more for, like, a Dracula thing, but I was like, there was something about it where just looking at the tutorial for that, I was very easily able to adapt it to my own thing and change it without having to see it like laid out perfectly for me. Whereas I don't know if I, I feel like I could do that with foam for some reason. I, it, it's, it's almost too raw in a weird way. I don't know. No, I... I can kind of get where you're going. I think maybe I have the opposite thing because I'm absolutely useless when it comes to fabric. Um, I have to thank Sarah and her mother for every day for helping me out, like even making anything to do with fabric, with uh, be it like a Superman cape or the Batman cape. It's just when it gets to that part, I'm just like, oh shit. It's why I, when I was posting in progress pictures, the cape was the thing that happened last because it was like, well, this is the one fabric part. <laughs> I do not know how to do this. <laughs> um, but... So I get I get what you're saying. It's just like when you get comfortable with a material, or you just built in a way in your experiences where you can understand the basic. This goes to this, this to this, this to this in your head thing, and that lets you make um, the shortcuts you mentioned. Because sometimes you do have to like things can be laid out perfectly, and there can be great instructions, and you can have like great tutorial videos or like Pinterest posts. But at the end of the day, there's going to be a hiccup and you've really got to try and wing it at that point and if you're comfortable with something you can I know I've done that and from what you've saying this is what you've done um, and I think that's part of maybe the the joy of when you actually do because I've bought cosplays before and I think that's totally valid I think every single person who puts on anything can call themselves a cosplayer because it's it's in the name it's just play it's people who it's not like a form of serious you can take it to higher levels like anything but you can do it however you feel comfortable with whatever you look like and do that properly um but i do feel like there is a sense of when you do make it yourself more of a story with it because there will be those moments where especially for longer ones you've spent hours funny will just happen that you just remember that like you look at one piece of the costume you know, <laughs> and it, it gives it more sentimentality of just like, okay, and this is like a piece of art that I put together. Um, so I feel like having, like any art, having comfortability with the materials you're working with is going to help you a lot. No, definitely. And you were cutting out a little bit there, but I, I think we got the gist of what you were saying. Um, yeah, there's something definitely to making it. I've, I've been tempted to buy a cosplay in the past but i had a really bad experience the very first time i tried to do that um i when i was doing my joker cosplay 
I, I don't know why I do this, because I'm the only one that's going to know. When I was doing my Joker cosplay, I was very particularly going for Arkham Asylum Serious House Serious Earth Joker. And so for that, I was like, I was going to tie up and pin back my hair, and I was going to commission a wig. And, you know, there it... it like, I, I was looking online and I found a bunch of stuff that, that people could do with wigs. I'm like, oh yeah, so you could you could do Joker's, like, weird, you know, flowy, wavy hair. I was described it as, like, Elvis Presley meets Tim Burton. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good way to do that. Yeah, like, just, it, I always imagine, like, the fucking hill from Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, like, that that was my vision for, for Joker's hair and that, for, like, what the wig should look like. And... I commissioned someone and they they just straight robbed me. They had clearly no intention and like part of it's my fault too for not doing more research on it. I just was like looking for people that commission wigs and I I just messaged the first person and they said they could do it for like a hundred bucks and I was like down, and I I didn't didn't do any research didn't see if they had any like gallery or anything <laughs> um i just i just went for it because oh. i assumed yeah I, I assumed it'd work out now to be fair it don't don't feel too bad for me i did it with paypal paypal refunded me it was all fine um, oh, okay but yeah i just like i had such a bad experience the first time i tried to commission something that i was just like eh, i don't know if i really want to do that again because there is something, like, especially me, I am so particular. I, I'm so weird. I am highly particular and highly critical, but when it comes to me doing it myself, I, even if it's not perfect, at the end of the day, I know I did my best, and so I, I can, like, let it go at that point and let it not be perfect as long as I know I gave it everything I could, you know? I think that makes sense, especially when money is involved. At that point, you're like, it's, whenever you're commissioning cosplay things, normally these things do get quite high in price because it takes a lot of man hours and it takes a lot of... They're normally very niche things you need or very specific items. So the, the process can get, get pretty steep. And if you go for all of that and you don't get your thing properly or something's wrong with it, it is infuriating. It is very like, gah. Thankfully, I've only had one recent experience with that uh, and that was with Vegeta armor which still don't know what that is um, so that completely sucked for me but it's one of those things where there is a certain I have 100% feel like it's more required how I feel back where there is just something that needs to look perfect to make it work um, my example for the main thing was like the Batman cow I cannot make that. <laughs> I cannot. I could try to make that, but it will look awful. I can try to make it, and it can look passable and decent. But for what I was trying to go for, Batman cow like needs to be for me at least. It needed to be like movie level quality, and that's why when I'm Tiger Stone effects, they've got very affordable for the level of quality they've put out. Um, and that's the stuff I would say if anyone listen as he wants to do go for cosplays i think your best bet is sticking to less so people you message about that or people you have to reach out to stick to people who have like sites stick to people who have some youtube stick to people who have like reviews so you know at least what you're getting into because i i feel like there is a big this isn't disrespect disrespect anyone who has got them but still puts out good work but i think even they would admit there is such a there's a vulnerability when you're going to something that isn't because cosplay is so different than like just a buying a costume off like a halloween store because you're normally going for something very specific and that can bring a lot of risk because by going more specific you're going into more people who won't give you that <laughs> the way you need it because there's going to be some finite details there mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely something that i i think i've kind of know noticed or, or caught on to is just when you when you go for cosplay stuff it it seems like there is such a an easy way to to kind of screw people over or you know there's there's just always that kind of unnerving chance that 
you get it, you paid $150 for it or whatever, and it's like really, really shoddy. Like you might as well have just bought it in a Halloween store, you know? Those mm-hmm. that that can just be such like a an absolute killer. Um that it's it's just such a pain. Um so one thing that you mentioned and I, I do kinda wanna like go back to a little bit because I don't want to pat myself on the back too much. Um so I mentioned that I am more comfortable with with fabric as a median. Um I should say I, I mentioned that I'm a really bad stitch. Uh and I, I should definitely say my mom has helped me with so many of these and she finds them all ridiculous. <laughs> and like, it's it's partially her fault. I, I do want to establish, it is partially her fault that she's had to help me so many times because she's a really bad teacher when it comes to sewing. Like we were over there the other night and I just wanted her opinions on what to do with how to attach the collar to the cape. And She's like, oh, no, you got to use a sewing machine for it. I'm like, oh, well, I'm here now. Can I just use yours? And she goes, well, I don't want to sew tonight. I'm like, I'm not asking you to sew. I'm asking you to look over my shoulder while I use the sewing machine. And so I'm trying, <laughs> and then something goes wrong. And I'm like, okay, so how do I fix this? And she's like, right, just, just get up. <laughs> and so <laughs> she just finishes it for me. And I'm like, damn it. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> um, that is magnificent. Exactly. And like, so like when I did my Green Lantern cosplay, which was, eh, looking back on that one, that's probably the most cringy one I did. But I, I, I had a lot of ideas that were probably each on their own, not too big a thing, but collectively were too far out of my reach uh, for my capabilities. Well, like, when I did my Green Lantern one, I was like, okay, I bought a compression shirt, and I bought some stretchy green fabric to... A black compression shirt, some stretchy green fabric, put the green fabric over the seams, boom. It's It's got, like, a green lines to it. It's cool. And then, like that, on its own, if I just slapped a Green Lantern patch on there or something, it probably would have been fine. I decided to do something that I still think is really freaking cool. And that's put a glowing Green Lantern symbol on there. My fucking word. That shit is impossible. Do you know how hard it is to cut a circle in EL panel? That shit's insane! (laughs) oh my god I, I wanted to scream when I did that it was like you know it just sounds so simple it's like I even bought like a special thing that cuts circles and it just was a, an absolute shit show man absolute shit show <sighs> I mean uh, absolute props to all the Iron Man cosplayers out there mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know again I don't even what you uh, attempted there was just already like wow that's really ambitious because i ain't touching that shit with ten football <laughs> i know for a fact i'm gonna end up getting electrocuted or burn myself or set something on fire <laughs> <laughs> that's because you messaged me because i was like oh you were like oh that's a cool batman logo is it, it looks like it's glowing and i was like no and you, you sounded really disappointed like, ah. <laughs> it's like if i try to put leds in that thing went up <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel you there. I get, I get nervous around electronics, too. Um, EL, like, wire and panel isn't such, like, a risky thing of, of getting electrocuted, at least for my thing. It's just, it's so difficult to work with because it's kind of, like, just tiny that even, like, the most basic mistake, you've just, you've just wasted, like, $20, you know? Um, so that was a real kicker. Uh, also, it's really fucking annoying. Um, the EL panel and EL wire tends to just be like, you know, it's a little string of light or whatever, and it goes to a little pack that holds two AA batteries or like a 9 volt, and you just press a button and it turns on. And there's just always this... Shit's so fucking annoying. So, like, you know, walk around as Green Lantern. That's cool. 
someone tries to talk to you? Huh? What? I'm I'm sorry. I, I, all I got is just this <laughs> fucking awful sound. Green Lantern, here he comes to save the day. The power is ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the next. He's just dig that out, and for the next Green Lantern audio drama, that's all all the ring sound effects. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, like, the EL panel has, like, three settings. It's just, like, constant on, flashing, and then strobe. And so it could just be, like, ring power, 100%. Ring power, 50%. Ring power, 10%. I mean, it works. <laughs> There's your CW green alone. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. You know, I, I think that might be, like, a good trans transitional thing. Do you think that it's... Because something I hear a lot from people, and, and I don't know how serious a dig to take it as. Do you think that, like, as the cosplay community has grown, people have gotten more harsh on what superhero costumes look like in television and movies? Oh, 100%. Uh, you can see... The, the the definitely see it all the time with the Spider-Man uh, fandom, not even on the costumes, but on the fact that they they CGI over the costume so much, which it didn't used to be the case. Like people would just like, oh, the Raimi Spider-Man suit looks fantastic, yeah, yeah. Very much when the first Amazing Spider-Man costume came out is when the cosplay scene really blew up for that, and people were like, there was a guy called McLean, and you can look him up on YouTube. He figured out how to make like to the dot replica of the amazing spider-man one costume like complete all from scratch all on very small budget he bought a and bunch of absolute... basketballs and stitched them I'm, I'm... together i <laughs> mean that's that's the critique isn't it but it actually isn't a basketball texture the homecoming texture is a basketball texture <laughs> that one's like a honeycomb so this is me debunking shit right here for that meme <laughs> um <laughs> there's 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 Alfie facts. It wasn't ever a basketball you peons. Um but yeah, so he did that. Um and after that happened, people were just like, Well, if he can do this on this thing, why can't people we'll do that? Um uh, definitely on the not so much the movie suits, because those are still kept like a very high like texture level quality. Um but the CW and like the other shows, like the Netflix shows as well, whenever they're like, oh, we're not going to put someone in the suit. Oh, we're, we're going to give them this. People are very quick to call out, well, no, the comic suit looks great. Look at these 10 photos of these people doing the exact comic suit fantastically. Um, I think it, it's been a very good ground, If for one positive thing for it, I think it's extremely made a good case for why the designs from the comics don't need to be tinkered with that much for some characters mm -hmm. where you can just i've seen so many there is in my opinion there is no excuse for them to be a bad green goblin costume anymore because i have seen so many genius looking green goblin cosplays and it terrifies me how good they look um and it that, that's just like okay you can do it because <laughs> that was a character I, I was like okay maybe you can't do that but i've seen it as i Okay, that's proved. Um, so yeah, really, there is less so just because often the the case I think we both see is like people call it cheap looking a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that really has much to do with it. I th think it is very much a lot of, of these, especially like if we go back even further to like early comic book movies. Like looking back now, it's kind of crazy, but. The design choices there aren't necessarily made for like cost concerns. It's more or less so like, oh, we gotta make sure this looks good on camera. Whereas a lot of these cosplay photographers, especially the really high tier ones, are like, oh no no no, we make these look good on camera, but these are just the comic costumes. So I, I see that a lot. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like there's, I didn't see much of it. I I, I saw the clip of it and I was like, yeah yeah, it's it's just. It's just fine. It's not even, like, good or bad. It's just it's just there. It's very forgettable. But, like, the Gotham Batman suit got so much shit for being in, like, one shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it's not great. It's pretty much the least imaginative Batman costume you could ever do. But it's, it's just a pretty basic Batman costume. If we'd had this in, like, a Batman show in the 
you know, 90s or 2000s, I think everybody would have been fine with it. I don't know where, where like, the outrage is coming from here. <laughs> but I think it's just because... I think the outrage for that... I mean, don't want to do that, but I think the mostly it's for that is because very much the premise... Like, this is a Smallville thing. Is they build it up. They tease you. And for people who stuck with Gotham for that fucking long, I'm like, yeah, if you stuck and watched that show for how many god seasons that got, and then you finally get your promised shot of Batman, and he looks like that, <laughs> I'd be pissed off too. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I guess this kind of goes back, and I don't, I don't want to get too far away from it. It goes back to like that whole conversation we had about like fan entitlement. Um, getting like really, really annoying, and and maybe it's just more of that that I found distasteful than I than it was like anything against the costume itself or the 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 criticism itself. But I don't know. Like it it seems like yeah, there there have been absolutely incredible Batman cosplays, and and one of the arguments I've heard that I just absolutely agree with is I'm really sick of all black Batman costume on film. There's been plenty of people who have shown you can do a really, really nice, believable, you know, gray and black uh, Batman costume. You know, I've, I've seen, like, recreations of the Arkham suits and stuff like that. Uh, and, and so there really shouldn't be any reason to just put Bat Batman in all black on film again. He should be able to have, you know, a little bit of palette variety. Um, and I think that argument had some weight to it. I mean, we got it in BVS. We got the basically the Frank Miller suit, but I mean, it looks amazing. M movie mm -hmm. aside, the the suit looks amazing and I think I think Snyder would have had a harder time getting away with that if not for, you know, some of the the fan community kind of rallying around cosplayers proving that you can do the gray and black suit. No, I I think that's a really good point. I, I'd be very interested to see these pitch meetings where I, I wouldn't be surprised if like someone was like, oh, I don't, would that work? Oh, I said, let me get my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you, it's so much easier these days. Where you, it's, it's almost like you just get free concept art for all these characters where, oh, we don't know if like, Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, oh, do we really think we can adapt some of their character into this? Oh yeah, let me see who did that. Oh yeah, look, they go great. <laughs> yep. It's that kind of thing. Oh, this one, this one doesn't really work so much. Okay, we won't do him. Like, it, I think it's a very a proving ground that we're not being told. I think they pay more attention to the cosplayers than people that aren't. Especially because Marvel's even doing like a on their YouTube channel, they have like a Marvel becoming thing where they get cosplayers to make their suits from the movies. Where they give them some resources, like okay, make this, and then they post it on their YouTube channel. I did not know that. Um, I'm gonna have to check so, those out. Yeah, they did one for Mysterio. They did one for like uh, Black Cat from the PS4 game. It's quite cool. Um, but so they show you that they are actively trying to get involved with them. Um, I know some cosplayers who got like invited to movie premieres to like hype it up and like do it. It's the same way that you used to get back into early days when it was like the Orlando. Spider-Man used to go all around the country to promote shit because that was just a costume that they had. Mm. Um, so there's the I think it's just the the natural evolution of that of as things become more readily available, as things have more access to resources, more people are learning how to make costumes, and these companies are noticing that and they're being able to kind of capitalize on it. But at the same time, I do think it kind of runs into something that maybe the comics were having a problem with, where because because these fans do really good designs, like when back in the days when people did really good like concept art of this is what this character's redesign should look like, or this is my OC, it, it, I'm sure some of them become quite conscious of, oh, this guy made a really good interpretation of what Daredevil should look like in live action. Fuck, now we can't use that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do wonder about that stuff too, of like the legal ramifications of this and you know can we just hire them on as a consultant well not really um for reason there was one case where that did happen quite recently um the person recently the cw did like a a teaser to like their crisis that's going to happen uh later next year um 
but there was the thing where they got Jay Garrick the Flash on. Mm -hmm. From like the, but the, not Jay, the guy, the actor who plays Wesley Snipes, who in he needed to get his original '90s Flash costume, but they didn't, they couldn't make the cow. Cosplayer had made the cow, so they just brought him on and he made the cow for him. Um, so that's quite a cool thing that I think more people should do. Like if Gotham literally just said, "Oh hey, Tiger Stone effects, can you make us a better Batman cow?" I'm sure they do it for free. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they'd do it for the fucking credits, you know. Um, that shit would be would be huge for a cosplay studio. Um, I don't even know what you'd call those because. Do you think it's a big enough business that you could have a whole studio, or is it just like a lot of independent garage operators kind of things? Huh. I think it is garage operators, but they make enough to make it a little... I think it's similar to YouTube, is you make enough where it's a job, but you're not exactly living... It's very much like, oh, two people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that it can support two people, but any more than that, and it would just break. No, I think I think that's a fair way to look at it. Um, and it's I don't know, it's really interesting. I'd I'd definitely be curious to talk to more people about you know that that actually do the commissions and stuff, because um, that's the side of things I've just never gotten the chance to really hear much about. But it does sound absolutely fascinating. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this back a little bit and and kind of talk more about our stuff, like our interests with it. Um, so I mentioned it a little bit earlier, is I have very particular visions, and I probably shouldn't because I'm probably going to be the only one that cares. Um, so like, my Joker cosplay that I did, that I'm still relatively proud of, I think it looked really good. Um, my Joker cosplay that I did, I was aiming for, you know, or, or at least inspired by, um... Arkham Asylum, Serious House on Serious Earth Joker. The the thing I was trying to get was the hair, and so I ended up, like, you know, putting shit tons of hairspray in my hair and dyeing it green, and hey, funny enough, I started going bald after that. I wonder if those two could have been connected. Um, but, like, <sighs> maybe. You never know. Uh, it's, it's something to worry about. Um, so, like, you know, I, but I, I was going for, like, a very particular thing that I knew no one no one was gonna fucking know what that was besides me and you know what i'm doing with the zoro thing because my mom's like why do you have such a heavy material for the cape zoro always wore like a really like silky cape and i'm like but mom i'm going for the matt wagner zoro and his whole thing is like <laughs> it's supposed to be stuff that a peasant could wear um and, and like yeah because that's like one of the cool things about matt wagner's zoro run is somewhere in the the beginning he talks about like building the costume and he wants it to look like anybody could be zoro so he doesn't he, he like purposely doesn't have a lining in the cape because it needs to look cheap um everything about it needs to look like any peasant or peon could be zoro and like that's a really really cool thing so i'm going with these like really heavier materials really trying to, to find stuff that that um just looks like not pristine I, I don't want like shiny materials i'm trying to go for like you know really flat blacks and stuff um and i don't know i'm, I'm pretty excited about how it's working one of the things that actually really helps is the fact that i got the zorro hat second hand at goodwill and so it's it's actually a leather hat and it's kind of not like awful or anything, but it's a little, it's a little frayed. It's a little beat up. It's got some like parts with the leathers peeling, which I really, I, I really like that side of things. It, it just, it helps to, um, to kind of sell the overall look I'm going for, you know? Mm hmm. I think that's, you say it's only you cares, but like at first when I say that's the most important person who needs to care. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the next thing I think that's a really good point and I think characters who have that specific trait are the ones I feel like are the best to cosplay or the ones that can especially when you're not dealing with like the higher end stuff I feel like these are the ones that lend themselves to cosplay the most the re reason why Spider-Man is the most cosplayed character in the world not only just because anyone can wear that costume and look like Spider-Man 
you be a man, woman, anything, any skin tone, any race, any age. You can just look like Spider when you're in that costume. It's just a featureless thing, full body. You're just Spider Man. The next thing, the more homemade and crappy it looks, the better. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much got that thing where the my ideal Spider Man costume that I'm still too scared to do, but I, I'd really want to do it is just one that I want to make so the perfect balance between looking good and looking like Spider-Man, but also looking like Peter Parker at 15 year old could have made it. Yeah. And that's where I feel like with Spider-Man particularly, the cosplayers have always surpassed the movies because the movie suits look too good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's always the like joke about fucking um, the Raimi trilogy is that thing looks so professionally built, you know? Uh, it, it mm-hmm. always kind of cracks me up. It's like they, they got better, and like certainly, I I mean my favorite's the the homecoming homemade suit. I fucking love that thing so much, because um, mm-hmm, it, it, it's exactly what you're talking about. It looks like a 15 year old made it. Um, <laughs> so I I do really enjoy that one. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's a really good point of when you can, when you can do things and and kind of make the 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 tinkering backyard you know garage kind of thing work for the costume and i think that's something that i haven't got to it yet but it's probably gonna be one of mine i do next year but for like goku i'd very much want to make it so like the gi looks like it's like dirty and it's got a bit of like farmer's dirt on it and it, it doesn't look like it's made a very nice material like it's sturdy stuff but it's something you probably like maybe some of the stitches on are loose and stuff i think you can get that kind of vibe with that um more so it's on the other end i think it's why it's so much harder to fully pull off someone like batman or even superman because when the moment you introduce that like sci-fi element or that like high-tech element it to make you understand oh that's that character it requires a level of craftsmanship and skill above and beyond to to portray the same thing for the character base it's like superman if you're saying oh these are these came from krypton then it kind of does require like that like, a texture to it it requires something more than just the fabric whereas so he, he can be harder one to pull off whereas something like again uh, a Zorro or a Spider-Man you can get away with making it look cheaper but it makes it look better mm-hmm. yeah and like I mean it helps that Zorro's like a hundred year old character so there's just like a lot that's been done that's that's just like a lot of like costumes are based on Zorro's costume <laughs> um, which is I, I know that's weird <laughs> to say but like I may I don't necessarily have any like evidence to back this up, but it's something I have a really hard time thinking of something that predates it, and that's like the domino mask slash the bandana mask that like Zoro's kind of got a range between those those two. Um, I, I think like most costumes that for any character that have a domino or bandana mask. Um, that that's all kind of rooted in Zorro, <laughs> um, which is a like it's it's kind of crazy to think about that. So like you know again a big cape. It's it's not only him, but a lot of it's rooted in his. It, it, Zorro was at the very least one of the first ones to kind of touch on a lot of the tropes that other things would play into. Like, everyone says, oh, uh-huh. all the superheroes are really based off the story of the Scarlet Pumpernickel. And, yeah, sure, but, like, Zorro was also highly popular. It was pulp fiction. So just a lot of the the touches that go along with Zorro, I mean, like, it's, it's so crazy to think about it. Because this shit just couldn't happen anymore. Johnston McCauley writes the Zorro story, The Curse of Capistrano, in 1919. The Mark of Zorro, starring Douglas Fairbanks, like who's you know fucking like Tom Cruise level or whatever, star of Hollywood, comes out in 1920. That's crazy to me to think about still, that it just turned around <laughs> that quickly and and the character got that popular that fast. 
Um, so a lot of the, the costume elements are just so universal because of how much of the characters wrapped up in the tropes of superhero costumes and the tropes of like film costumes and stuff. So it's just it's it's fascinating to me. I'm sorry, I'm going too far into it. <laughs> no, no, I feel like um, I think that's important because when you are doing cosplay, a lot of people do like to throw in those references and homages, and it does all kind of go all the way back to that kind of stuff. Where okay, where do you get into this idea? Where do all these ideas come from? Of not just cosplay but like the the popularificate the i don't know the word for it but just the encouragement of the mass character and the the facade over you kind of thing and zoro definitely not even just pulling all the tropes and using them he's the one that kind of consolidated them into one kind of archetype model mm. That was then later go. You get to Doc Savage and you get to Superman and voila. Um, it's a very clear line there. Um, so I feel like that's very. I think it is relevant, but at the same time, maybe just even going away from just like superhero stuff. I think like another big influence on cosplay and the thing that maybe spawned into just other like movie stuff is like. Than like the Star Wars cosplayers group have had, I think, and that when that movie hit, I think that was the thing that really started the cosplay boom. Is after the first Star Wars movie dropped. I I could definitely see that. Um, I think Star Trek is maybe the the predecessor to it that that kind of like created the idea for within nerd communities to kind of get into cosplay because. Star Trek was just that thing that was like really easy to cosplay, right? Oh, yeah. It's it's a yeah. sweater with a patch, basically. Um, but then, like, you know, as soon as Star Wars dropped, yeah, I, I think you're definitely right. It, it just, it was such a cultural phenomenon that, of course, it became something that, like, people wanted to start, you know, getting into and, and uh, kind of personifying. Um, I don't know if I'd say it was, like, it was the first thing that dropped because I think it's a, an important thing to discuss here is cosplay is of course a term that comes out of Japan because it was much popular much more popular to do in Japan for a long time and it's only kind of become popular in America relatively recently like cosplays all, costumes have always been a thing here in America obviously but like to show up at a convention in costume was like something that only like the super hardcore fans would do and it was something that was that was kind of mocked um back in the day whereas now i feel like it's it's become a lot more mainstream than it used to be mm -hmm. i think that's a good point um it definitely does kind of lean more into the anime side of things and then that bleeding over into the video game side of things and the movie kind of things and the comic side of things. It's all just kind of a hodgepodge. Um, but when, like, anime cosplay started really, like, like, picking off with, like, the variation of characters and the anime studios putting out guides for how to do it and, like, stuff like that, I think that did help encourage other mediums kind of getting behind, oh, maybe this is something we should start promoting. So, like, the, the hiring models to dress up as like scarlet witch for marvel boots and stuff like that those companies started doing so there is all of that um i think it's interesting especially to see how much of a not even just oh the fans go and do it but how much of like a business it's, it's become but like mm -hmm. if you have a convention you're gonna need to get some cosplayers there like there's part of the organizing now of like comic-con you see so many youtube videos of just like oh cosplay montage video of here's all the cosplays from comic con with some music behind it like it's edited really nicely um but that's like part of the attraction now it's not even just oh i want to go see all my the fans and stuff because when little kids go to cosplay they're going to to disneyland because you're going to get to see darth vader in person and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that's a, a really good point um and you know it, it can be kind of underwhelming when you go to a con and the cosplays aren't that much kind of like what just happened 
last weekend with Haley and my friend Bobby and I <laughs> went to a con. There were there were a couple cool ones. We we saw a guy in a cool vulture from uh, Homecoming uh, costume. That was that was pretty neat. Um, but. Eh, there's there's a guy dressed as Captain Falcon and he like decked out a a tricycle or something to be the Falcon mobile, but it was kind of just, eh, you know, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is it, it was more annoying because he was just driving around the hall and the hall was not very big, <laughs> so <laughs> it was like just like dude just put it the fuck away it's it's too big um so i don't know like it, it could be kind of underwhelming when when a con doesn't have like that that really big you know attraction or atmosphere to it you know so i, can, I, I, I think you're definitely that. right um that that some of those you know smaller cons can be a blessing and a curse just depending on what you're getting and sometimes it can feel like kind of a um Oh, what's the word I want here? Kind of a, eh, I guess we'll do this. I guess we'll we'll make this happen. Uh, I don't know. Um, one of the cosplays that I did, and and I just haven't had much chance to talk about it. So again, like I get, I get very particular about like I need this to make it happen. And for the longest time, the Zoro cosplay has been on hold for me because I couldn't find a fucking rapier. Um, I, I just, they, they're just not cheap. Uh, I, I've been searching for them online and like the best I could find was $150 just to start. <laughs> uh, mm. and finally I found one. I just, again, last weekend, the highlight of it was I went to a con and there was a rapier for sale for $80 and it didn't have a blade. It was just a nice flat piece of metal. Basically. I'm like, thank you. God, they've been waiting for this forever. Uh, so I was really, really excited to get that, and that kind of got me impassioned about it. And, you know, Halloween's coming up again, yada, yada, yada. Um, but, like, I get very particular, and like, okay, if I can make this work, but I need the thing to do it. Um, and I think the the best thing I've ever done cosplay, and, and maybe that's why, maybe I just need to, you know, kind of kind of check out, and, like, everything else is just downhill. Um, the best thing I ever did cosplay-wise was my Sonic the Hedgehog cosplay. Because I, I didn't go for, like, you know, trying to look like Sonic. I, I went for just, like, kind of a... Something that was was in the spirit of Sonic. Something that looked cool uh, and and mirrored the characters. So I did, like, a, uh, a tan shirt and a blue hoodie over it. I rolled the sleeves of the hoodie up to my elbows... So I had, you know, the, the skin tone arms. Um, and then I had, like, this kind of dorky-looking Sonic hat thing, but I, you know, Velcroed it onto the hoodie, and, and just wearing it like that made it look a lot cooler. And that was all fine. Wore jeans, uh, just blue jeans. What really made it all work... This is my fucking Sonic shoes. Have I ever showed you a picture of my Sonic shoes, Alfie? Yes, you have. You mentioned them, and I was extremely impressed. Yeah, I fucking went to town on those, man. I got some really nice, clean-looking red sneakers and with, with the white bottoms, and then I went to a cobbler and had him fucking add a white leather strap with, like, a proper buckle on it. And it looks like, like, a lot of people give me, like, some side-eye about the buckle, but fuck them, man. It looks good. <laughs> yeah, I, I 100% agree. It's very legit. It's the best way you, I think you could go about doing a Sonic cosplay. You nail it. Thank you. Yeah, so, like, again, it's just, it's always just getting, like, that one particular thing for me. Because for every cosplay I've done, that's that's what it's always been about, is, like, can I get like this one really specific thing down to, to create the details? So for, like the the Joker, it was the hair. For Batmite, it was the fact that I was wearing Batman underpants over my black jeans. For um oh what was it? Uh for for Green Lantern it was the glowing symbol. For Zorro, it's kinda like between the hat and the sword. Um It's just getting those those like very specific details that I think kind of brings the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a it's a good goal to get because it's like you have like the, the showpiece then you have oh here's everything around it but this is the thing that 
like, whoa, this is like, so see, I can't believe you did that. It lets you, it elevates everything else around it in the piece. Like, again, I have no idea about fashion stuff or anything, but a lot of people do say like, oh, one of the cool things you need to do when you've got like, a good outfit is you need to have, you don't want to have too many star of attractions. You have one piece that the rest of everything is built around and then that enhances everything. Or like a meal is like, there's one flavor and then there's complementary flavors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think taking that approach to do especially when you are on a budget and you can't make everything the standout star you say i'm going to make one really killer looking thing and everything around it will be good enough to where it just pulls it together but that one thing is going to make the piece um and i think that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah i definitely agree um so one thing i i think i want to talk about is going back to a cosplay it, it, it seems like for all the passion that, that gets put into these things, it seems that like one of the biggest problems I've noticed with, with not just myself, but like I, I seem to notice it with a lot of other cosplayers is they'll do it like maybe two or three times and then they're just kind of like done with it, you know? Like they, they just stop. And I think it's because like the... the I, I don't know. Maybe because like the the attraction is in the pursuit as opposed to the end goal, maybe? I think so. Case, I think a lot of the times it just comes down to this, like, dissatisfaction. Mm. Um, I don't really have a cosplayer that I'm proud of. <laughs> I, I every, every time I finish with one, I always can point out, like, ten things wrong with it so then every time after that I've put it on and it's it's to the point where it's finished so I can't go back and fix things now I'm just like it disheartens me it, it's one of the things alright I'm just going to move on and do the next one um, so I don't actually have a lot of similar to mentality for a lot of my old outfits a lot of them do end up getting scrapped for new things there's that and I think that, that that's me personally I don't know some people have things where they're just like um, cosplay follow Rose and her boyfriend Kevin uh um, they do a lot of anime cosplays, they do a lot of narrative cosplays of their old stuff, uh, for like their wizard stuff for different characters. So they've got like a big like cast of ensemble of like, okay, we can do all these characters, we make photo collages of all the characters we can do. But at the same time, there's only like, we, we'll do these one, two characters, and these will be our main, and then like a couple of months, maybe we'll do these as a one off. But they'll be like just the, oh, we want to do that for one photo shoot kind of thing. Thing. It is very much the same way that you kind of take as ask an artist to redraw a drawing twice. I think is the thing. It's like okay, we did the drawing, we worked on that a lot. Here's the drawing. Ah, oh, that got a good response. Next one. Mhm. I I think there is something to that. It's it's hard to want to go back to it, which maybe is kind of like the. Um the real appeal to the the commissioned pieces you know is if you've commissioned it if it's been you know given to you and it's like this almost pristine final product kind of thing then there's you can just have the fun of wearing it you can just have the fun of of going places and experiencing things in that outfit right you don't have the the uh, baggage of like oh, I made this and I worked really hard on it and now I'm just disappointed in it every time I look at it it's uh, it's my uh, it's my bastard child that's that's like exactly uh, how I felt with things and then with like the Batman thing where it's like well the rest, I made the rest of the arm but the cow looks great and it's so fun to have the cow on it so it's a good reaction mm-hmm. so whereas like the, the Spider-Man ones are like oh the eyes are messed up on the this bit, ah, uh, the webbing on this bit's falling apart. Ah, uh, the Vegeta one, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> just everything fucking, I, I just can't even look at those photos. It just hurts my soul. Aww, uh, I thought it looked good. So, I, I thought you did a good job. I, the one. I give a shit what you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me just being a, a bitch to myself. South. This is one of the only things. This is what I'll, I'll, I'll put on supreme confidence, but I am by far my own harshest critic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 that thing for me. Um, but it is one of those things I do think. At the same time, 
it doesn't necessarily make me i guess maybe there's a distinction between when you're saying oh i'm gonna wear the costume i made a year ago again for this thing because i'd rather be like okay i've done this character once i can do this character again better mm-hmm. and I don't like, know, there's, there's been really great um examples of people who've been posting their photos like here's my first like this absolutely fantastic goku cosplayer called christopher mini uh he posted like a while back his five years ago goku pick where he's very skinny very very small wearing a very cheap like the the cos the, the goku outfit everyone wears but it was like tattered and ripped and he wore like a really uh really ugly colored yellow goku super saiyan wig uh and he's just like in a really bad pose with like a crappy camera he's like okay that's five years ago okay here's now and it's just goku <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's just like holy shit these these fucking huge <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like perfect wig perfect contacts perfect camera quality everything um so i think that there's there's something to that where okay he doesn't have to wear that crappy goku costume ever again but he can just keep working on it mm-hmm I think I think that's a good way to look at it is you can keep improving it and you know you can it, kind of similar to what we were talking about like oh you need the piece to kind of like bring everything but if you keep working on a character and keep improving it you don't need the piece anymore because slowly over time the whole outfit becomes the piece you know mm-hmm. and like I'm kind of thinking about that too like Mizora costume I bought pants for it and I don't love the pants they're like these weird i think they're called like thai fisherman pants or some shit i don't fucking know they've got a rope that you have to use to tie them off they're like seven thousand sizes too big for literally anyone like i can put them on over my baggy ass jeans and you can't tell um it's it's kind of crazy so like you know but i'm at the same time I really love the sword. I really love the hat. I really am getting excited about this cape. Um, you know, there's there's so much about this that's that's kind of working and growing for me that I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like I might be able to make this happen and, and kind of just really have a very, very fine thing that I can just improve on little bits over time. Like, I bought boots for it that are just... Again, nice thing about Zoro is so much of its actual things that people use. I just bought, like, short riding boots, and it, it, it looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's the best feeling for it, is when you get to that point yeah. where you're that comfortable and you can just be like, okay, here, here's the foundation, and the foundation fucking rocks. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, like, that's, there's some stuff that I get excited about for that, so I don't know. I gotta say, Alfie, have this conversation with you. It's made me really nostalgic for cosplay, and it's made and doing the Zora ones kind of made me, you know, remember what I was missing out on. Though Haley's gonna make fun of me for developing yet another hobby. We <laughs> um, <laughs> just hundred percent there. We need to we need to find a joint one we can do. Right, right. That'd be a fun one. I don't know. That'd be, that'd be, you, you got me. You got me thinking. At least I'll give you that. I'll take you on that one then. As the geeky gentleman promised, that's the, the tease. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Could could it be geeky gentleman themed? Could I like cosplay as you and you cosplay as me? Could that be a thing? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'll just put on a, a, a shitty British accent and... <laughs> I like that I didn't even go for anything close to your dialect there. That was that was pretty impressive of me. Um, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I think this is a, a pretty fun episode just to kind of talk about this stuff, kind of walk down memory lane with it a bit. Um, do you have anything else you wanted to bring up or, or are you pretty satisfied with this? And now I think we covered basically everything. Okay. Of of your cosplays, what's your one that you hate the least? <laughs> oh, which bastard child crawling from under the abyss do I not? Probably the Batman one. Um, that's the only annoying thing about that one is that's the worst to wear. 
Hmm. So I, I hate getting get it because <laughs> you you spend five minutes in that and you just sweat. You just become sweat. <laughs> you, you get you get fifteen pounds lighter after you take it off because you just you know sweat out so much. You know what someone needs to do is is the Steven Seagal Batman in shorts cosplay. I need that in uh-huh. my life so badly. Either that or some of the Lego Movie Batman costumes would be pretty fun to cosplay. Uh huh. I'd I'd love to do. Uh... I was the what's the one that got turned into Robin, <laughs> the, the the reggae Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that shit was so ridiculous. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. Well, everyone, next week we'll be starting with Geeky Gentleman Horror Month. Um, Alfie, do you have a horror movie or anything picked out already, or do you want to uh, just surprise us? I'm gonna have to surprise us because again. I'm useless when it comes to horror stuff, so I'm gonna have to look up shit. <laughs> really? You don't have like a favorite horror movie or anything? Not really. It's not like my genre. Ah, oh, you you sad little punk. Alright. Fair enough. <laughs> uh everyone, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the philosopher. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I don't, don't wanna give people hanging. I don't wanna don't wanna be a punk. I can't call me out like this. I wanna be a man. Um <laughs> You done it. The which one? The first one. Like like the nineties one or, or No, just the the, the, the one? chapter one of the modern movie. Uh no, we have not. I don't know why I'll I was asking because we've not done any version of it, but I was <laughs> I was just more trying to figure out for myself um like which one I'm gonna have to rewatch. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we've, we've not done it. So I guess it chapter one next week. Yeah. Shoot for that. All right. Everyone hope to see you there for that month's installment of ghouly gentlemen. Uh, until then I'm the philosopher. And I'm a ghoul for fun. (laughs) And we are your geeky gentlemen and we will be discussing things.